So this week what I'm going to do is a full overview of the latest live stream we had at the first of the year in 2023 from Ashes of Creation. Now normally I go over every single thing we've seen but with this one it was so tank heavy and there was so much information and it kind of was cocked up originally and then re-uploaded to YouTube. I think I'm going to focus on specific parts of it rather than give you every bit of information because if I did I think the video would just go on and on and on and it just wouldn't be viable to put into one video and obviously I always round them up in one video. But without rambling on anymore, I'm just going to jump right into the video now and get amongst it all. So the stream kind of was off to a bit of an edgy one and the original stream that was put up, people kind of had some issues with it and then it was took down off the Twitch and then it was re-uploaded on the YouTube with a new showcase and that's kind of the one I got to watch because for the first time ever, I couldn't actually attend the one live at the time it was going out, which potentially wasn't a bad thing this time around because I actually got to watch the second part and I honestly thought it was fucking amazing really well done and i was quite impressed with what we've seen this month now the stream was all about the tank arch type which we'll see in alpha 2 and everything we've seen in the video is subject to change especially due to the feedback players give and during the live stream we've seen the tank we also seen the ranger cleric and fighter all synergistically working together and you know it might have not been to the scale of that super end game grinded out armor and all abilities augments and whatnot and the guild buffs and everything within the game that people seem to want to see firsthand but it was more a lower to your lower level version of what was going on and honestly I really liked it and the solo player was cool but when they were all interacting and all working together kind of made me think deep about how all of these arch types and all these mounts and other things within the game are going to interact and I honestly think it's going to be one hell of an experience so I'm quite pumped for it and again we were back in the Riverlands biome due to it being the predominant biome for Alpha 2 so I think they're just trying to show this off because they don't want to give away all the other stuff they've got going on and you know Steven's probably still working on that with Intrepid but at the same time I know they want to surprise and keep stuff secret they don't want to give us everything even at the end of Alpha 2 there's still going to be a lot of stuff we won't see till post launch of the game for this stream the demonstration had set a task out to find the items of the Titan Bark armor that Steven was missing and a weapon and shield for Steven's character so it was really cool the goal was to go out there get this armor and kind of show a mini like you know version one walkthrough of how it's going to be and what you can expect from the game. Obviously you don't really expect it's going to be much grander than this but it just had to be shorter for the kind of showcase of what was going on. And in the stream the cleric also had an update which was focused on attack animations and the root motion for the mason shield. They knew the cleric was a rough first date during the last live stream and I've since taken on another look at it. They've taken a focus on the post holds, quick transitions and overall cadence of it. We also got a look at some of the UI updates which included the quest journal where a player can have 30 quests and nine of them can be tracked linked to that was an objective tracker which appeared on the right side of the screen there was also a backpack which was split into three tabs inventory materials and quest items the backpacks also had a gold and silver indicator at the bottom which showed how much currency the player has and it was also an update to the world map ui all of these were a work in progress and still are a work in progress so I expect them to change but this is kind of the template going forward and I'm quite happy with what we've seen leading to Alpha 2. Do remember this is pre-Alpha 2 things, pre-Alpha 2 footage and UI and abilities and whatnot. Don't expect this to look like this at the finish date post-launch. And then Steven gives us a look at the tank attacks before any enemies were about. So the shield does the shield assault and this does need obviously a shield to be used. It has a 10 second cooldown. They describe it as a way to engage the enemy. It does some damage and has a bit of mobility and also creates a threat in a small area in front you the distance that a player can travel with it can vary depending on where the enemy is that you've targeted however it does have a limit and it's classed as short range this also applies the snared condition to enemies we then seen inciting strikes this has an eight second cooldown this is a forward cone aoe that generates threat and damage on impact with a target this is better for pulling multiple enemies as the threat as an aoe however it does not generate as much threat as the shield assault so bear that in mind trembling bellow was an next and this had a 15 second cooldown this is a cone shaped shout combined with a shockwave which does damage if the enemy is snared when this is used it will knock the enemy down so this attack will be best used after the shield assault for a good combo we moved on to grit next and this is a one second cooldown this is your damage mitigation ability when the ability is not being used the character will gain courage and the courage will stack the more courage you have stacked the more damage mitigation you will do for certain number of hits the character will be slowed down 
when using this ability and grit can be applied while you are mid swing of another ability if you toggle this ability it can be turned on and off at your own disclosure it reduces income and damage by 15% decreases movement speed by 30% and decreases outgoing damage by 20% when hit while using courage it reduces the damage by an additional 15% and removes one stack of courage courage is gained by being hit as a tank without the grit ability on then you add aegis this has a 20 second cooldown creates a protective aoe around the tank for 15 seconds it transfers 50% of all damage received by party members within the aoe to the tank it removes any negative status effects from the tank and it increases party members resistance with the aoe while it's active then we were lastly shown the grapple and steven had this ability however it needs a target to be used and it also still is being worked on and was missing some of the effects so i imagine that's going to change and tweaked about a lot so it could look vastly different again next time we see it when used it throws a hooked chain that damages the first enemy it hits and then pulls them to the tank that casts it this then applies snare to the enemy for three seconds and it would be great to use trembling bellow after this to knock down the enemy in that kind of combination they then headed to the quest location which was intended for the full group which is eight people however there was only four of them we got to see the orc and bane resonant which was the spectral flow and armor enemy using the melee weapon and the orc being echo which was also spectral flow and armor enemy but used lightning magic instead and enemies if pulled too far away from there they are meant to be will automatically go back to the least area they're attached to they then led us in to see the bow warden who had 6,400 health and once it was defeated it dropped a rare hammer some stones and the Calamir hunting certificate we then got to see how one type of the loot drops will work and in this instance it was need greed a pass system kind of what they have in final fantasy and many other mmos and you see a lot in these mmos it's kind of a commonplace now but i don't mind it but this was kind of one of the ways the show does and what will happen is the group will be able to decide what system the group will use whether it's going to be loot master round robin or need a Greed pass. They then talked about how the tank in Alpha 2 is going to be different to the tank in Alpha 1. The tank in Alpha 1 had to fulfill multiple roles due to not being as many archetypes and was more of an offensive melee, more of what you would expect from a fighter. But in Alpha 2, the tank's going to be more focused on defense, control, and threat mechanics. They want to create a tank archetype that all tank players are familiar with and they're not looking to redefine what a tank is completely, only improve it. The tank will have obvious mechanics like threat management, mitigation battlefield control and CC effects but they also want to focus on a way to protect party members like the Aegis skill they've showed during the live stream. They're also doing this so the tank's more useful for PvP so the players are encouraged to attack the tank rather than ignore them as the tank will be protecting the weaker players and you've got to understand this is a heavily based PvP game so this makes total sense. Steven then showcased how the abilities will affect long grass. Each skill leaves a different imprint on the grass and honestly seeing this and how it flowed out was just fucking ridiculous like my pc is going to be fairly decent for this and i want to play this in 2 to 4k on ultra settings and i do believe it's viable for me to do that i understand that's not the case for everyone but i really want to be immersed in this and what they've got to offer like this shit looks so impactful obviously like i'm pvx i do enjoy my pvp but to have this immersion and that pve with it is just brilliant like it's yeah i'm all for it and i really do like the effects and spells they could decrease the lighting on some things a little bit but all in all i'm not too asked a lot of people seem quite annoyed by it all but i think it's fucking amazing and they really are going in the right direction i'm hoping they can really utilize that ue5 and just grow and get better with it as the team learns to you know use it and utilize it more efficiently or learn new things with it steven then went into details about all their combat and power level and tweaking it in ashes of creation the experience will adjust based on the level difference between the enemy and the player when in a group they also take into equation the highest character level and the lowest character level and that will place a modifier on the experience they also included an experience bonus for when the players are grouping and the more people in the group the higher the bonuses and this is to promote players actually playing together and having full groups different areas that have been designed specifically and will be better for different group compositions now to that i say it's brilliant 
that they're doing this and I really like that they're on the ball but at the same time I'm pretty confident there will be somewhere to power level some bullshit some exploit or some bug within the game so don't go in thinking this will never happen I'm pretty confident it will but give due to Intrepid for really trying to figure some out and you know I'm happy with that and it's good that they're trying but unfortunately for Intrepid some battles probably can't be won and play the smart as fuck and they will find a way around this stuff to be more efficient and more competitive especially in a heavy pvp competitive political game like this also when the loot rules change the players in the group get a notification and the majority must agree to it before it can be changed so basically part of the leader can't just tweak and change stuff it's kind of a democracy based thing which is fairly decent and another thing to know is active blocking will be available to all arch types but will consume mana while using it how much mana it uses depends on the passives you spec in there and your character tree so it's kind of personal to you so we can't really know for definite because it'll vary from person to person this is something they really want to be testing in alpha 2 and get a lot of feedback on and finally we've seen the main boss of the whole area which was lord oak and bane he had 9600 health which was more than the other bosses he dropped a titan bark chest plate stone redwood lumber and a Callum ma hunting certificate now take into consideration this is a showcase. When we get down the line and we test more than Alpha 2, there's going to be bigger drops. There's going to be a lot more grind, a lot more stuff to go to and uh, go to or go after, I should say, or grind out. And obviously, post launch, this is going to be really complex. Personally, from what I've seen, I'm fucking really impressed with pre Alpha 2 because my mind is in pre Alpha 2, not post launch. And the people whose heads are in post launch or some of the guys that I've seen right on Reddit and a few of the other socials and then remove them, you really need to take a step back and look at what you're saying because you're acting like this is a fully launched game and this is not going to do it any benefit and crying and moaning about a game that hasn't even launched yet and it's still in its test well hasn't even got into the alpha 2 testing phases really doesn't help and if you really want a good game and you really want it to be brilliant get some feedback on the go don't just shout and scream and just say negative shit it doesn't help like for the most part either the devs are going to be influenced in the wrong way and make fucking mistakes because they're listening to the wrong feedback or they're just going to get sick of you shut down the ears not listen to you and no one's going to care about your opinion because you've been so aggressive with us just talking absolute bollocks which doesn't help the game really think about what you're saying and if you are passionate and maybe agitated by some things express it on the forums take a step back chill the fuck out write something down on the forums and get your opinion across that is the best way you can do it knock out a video if you want to do some content just make sure you articulate yourself correctly and just take that time because i'm promising you if you give that feedback in the right way it can definitely change clearly intrepid's taking this shit on board and you know i'm really impressed the December 1 for me was a bit chill and I kind of expected it. I wasn't too underhyped and I know a lot of folk weren't too happy with it. But this January update starting the year, fucking amazing. So well done to Intrepid Studios. I've got a lot more Ashes content coming as well as some Arc 2 stuff and potentially some other things in the works. Let me know though what you guys thought about this. Did you like the overview? Did you like the stream? Do you think I've missed anything? Obviously I know I've missed bits and bobs but it's just a really long video. These are the things that really got to me about the tank and i'm really impressed with the tank but what do you guys think do you think you don't like the direction of the tank the animation's too much do you not like the effects when you're hitting the ground or the pve or the pvx of it just let me know in the comment section below because i love reading them i like seeing the feedback and i like seeing what people are thinking around how the game's developing and when do you guys actually think alpha 2 will drop because now some folks are saying well it's definitely not quarter one we don't even think it's this year some folks are thinking it's going to be in quarter two or three what's your opinion on that do you think from what we've seen here if we see another couple we could be heading in the right direction to actually see the alpha 2 drop within quarter two or three i don't know i'm kind of thinking it's definitely coming this year but i don't think it'll be quarter one i think we may be heading to quarter two or three earliest but that'll depend on the next couple of streams i suppose also take into consideration we've only got two more arch types to see and we aren't going to be seeing someone of a bad till alpha 2 drops so yeah i mean either that says they're polished and ready to go and they're confident with them or maybe they need more work but if that was the case that still shows them so yeah I, I do think we're in the right direction for alpha 2 i really like the progression the game is making at this stage in development and i like the communication so fucking well done to them but as always i do really appreciate you watching the video do give the video a share in your other communities feel free to join our community if you want to be active and talk about ashes or arc 2 or any of them things drop a like on the video and hit me in the comment section below and as always i'll catch you in the next one cheers